Welcome to the 73rd episode of Split Focus, a film and TV podcast. My name is Simon Eady, and alongside me, I have my co-host and the Odin to the Spider-Man No Way Home hype Asgard, Adrian Pinter. How does it go, sir? General Kenobi, it goes quite well. How are you, man? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I'm just dry. I'm very dry. Like I'm a dry boy. <laughs> oh, okay. Interesting. Like, what? Why are you so dry? The weather in Canada, the weather in Guelph, the weather on in Ontario right now. It's very dry. It's very dry. It's colder. We're like hitting the zeros, the zero degrees Celsius because we're Canadian and we use Celsius here. Mm-hmm. And um, as a result, my hands just get dry. I think you've seen it before, but they're yeah. not, they become like like an old man. I'm a, mm-hmm. I'm I mean, old, you are an old man, but yeah, wrinkly man. And um, yeah, no, I know. I know the feeling. My my, it's always on my right hand mostly, but it still happens on my left one. But my right middle knuckle on that hand, every winter without fail, it gets like all fucking fucked, and it's just it's like super <laughs> just dry and it always bleeds, and I can't like close my hand properly, and I like I got to use moisturizer more often, man. So yeah, me too. I already am using moisturizer, which is ridiculous because I don't usually I start using it this early, at, as far as I know. Mm. But uh, but yeah, mine bleeds as well. It's annoying. Yeah, what moisturizer do you use? I don't even remember. Uh. My girlfriend bought it, bought it for me, like uh, I think for Christmas. I think it was like a stocking stuffer last year, mm-hmm. and uh, it works well. But I don't remember the name of it. Maybe I can report on that next uh, next episode. Yeah, let me know. Episode seventy four. Yeah, Simon, I just want to want want to say something real quick. Hmm. So last last week, um, our our lovely friend Ken he wrote into us and. Uh, he mentioned something about lions or like animals on set. And then I went on this tangent and I kind of dived into like, Oh, like the most dangerous movie, blah, 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 blah. But I just want to kind of add to this whole lions thing or animals on set thing. I see. Cause Ken actually messaged me directly. And he, he said the last time live lions were used in production was second hand lions in 2003. He thinks. Rather than CG, they usually you get peeps like Stan Winston Studios to do animatronics because we mentioned that like, oh, like most movies probably just use CG for like animals and stuff. But he says like a lot of them use like animatronics. And that company is, I think, the same company that uh, um, that had the, the Jurassic Park dinosaurs, Hmm. which I know about because I love Jurassic Park. I see. Yeah. I just want to add a little context. I show correction. A show correction, perhaps. Hmm. Yeah. Not necessarily corrections. I would say that's more of a clarification, more of an addition. You know what I mean? It It, it is. Yes. And yeah. actually, Ken wrote into us again. He did? Yes, indeed. He wrote an email into us. So let's reach into that mailbag for a moment here, shall we? We ask our listeners to write into us with comments, questions, and corrections by way of Twitter or by email to splitfocuspodcast at gmail.com. And Kenneth Saddlebauer said in his email... Dear No Way Home Hype Train and Postal Fetishist. What is that? What is that supposed to mean? I don't know. I'm going to Google it. I'm just going to continue. Anyway, he continued, People who aren't familiar with Moon Knight compare him to Batman, but the similarities are just the surface. Bruce Wayne witnessed his parents' deaths and trained to become a vigilante. Like other martial artists, he enters a fight to win with as little damage to himself as possible. Mark Spector was a skilled mercenary before being killed at a dig in Egypt. He became Moon Knight, the Fist of Khonshu, after the god resurrected him and told him that is now his purpose. He has a fighting style that Taskmaster refuses to copy. He fights to take down his opponent. If he gets beaten, stabbed, or shot in the process, he ignores it. Moon Knight, or Mr. Knight, has access to wealth like Batman, but not all of his personalities do. Jake Lockley is a cab driver of little means. Batman dresses in black to blend with the knight, Moon Knight wears white so people see him coming. Spectre isn't the best at anything, certainly not the world's greatest detective. Underlings and friends help to find clues, and he tends to fail at every relationship. He is currently angry with Khonshu, but still acts as his avatar. As odd as it sounds, I find Spectre more relatable as an everyman than Bruce Wayne. Signed, Kenneth, and he's got a quote here. The best way to ease your anxiety 
while waiting for a decision is to move into your alter ego. A quote by Tapan Ghosh. Adrian, Kenneth Fletter, we talked about Moon Knight mm-hmm. last week, specifically when we were talking about the Disney Plus Day and uh, how I, w- I was really hyped about Moon Knight. And I think we compared him to Batman. And I think, I think Adrian, Kenneth Stadelbauer is throwing some shade at us. Longtime listener, Kenneth mm-hmm. Stadelbauer. Throwing some serious shade, saying, "How dare you? How dare you compare Moon Knight to Batman? You fools!" Yeah, I th- yeah, we are fools. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. it. That's all we have to say about that. Yeah. It's good, actually. I love this background information because I didn't read anything in terms of Moon Knight comics. Yeah, so me I do appreciate that. Yeah, he also actually, it's funny. He messaged you about something that you said, and he also messaged me about something that I said because he knows my connection to the uh, the Incredible Hulk series with Bill Bixby. Mm-hmm. from the 1980s or whatever, 1970s. Yeah. And um he mentioned that the the garb in She-Hulk that you see in that teaser trailer for She-Hulk that they showed mm-hmm. at Disney Plus Day, the garb that uh Mark Ruffalo is wearing is reminiscent of that and he's oh. claiming that because the line that um Tatiana Maslany says in that is you won't like me when I'm angry, which is from that series and originally he believes that that is a callback specifically to that show. And I don't know how he missed that. I feel like I'm, I'm also a fool for missing that particular thing. Because we talked about how that little clip in that trailer, it's weird that they would show that clip. Are they going back in time? Mm-hmm. But I think Ken was trying to point out to me in his message um, that maybe they're not, not going back in time. She-Hulk, I don't know if you know this, is actually one to break the fourth wall. And there's a good possibility that there's some kind of weird kind of zany hijinks going on with that. Kind of like a Deadpool-esque character when it comes to that sort of stuff. Mm, yeah. I wasn't aware of that. I didn't know that that connection existed. Mm. So I don't know. It kind of makes me more excited because I really did like that TV series. I must have seen like 50 episodes. 50? Maybe 25. 25 to 50. Yeah. Ah. How many episodes of that show were there? It would be funny if there was like 41. Let's find out. But, yeah. Let's find out. By the way, I Googled postal fetishist and uh, nothing really popped up, but there is... I don't know if NY Daily News is an actual, um, like, real reliable news source, but it popped up. Colorado dad, Mark Redwine, convicted of killing his son Dylan over feces fetish picks. Anyways, I'm going to continue. Um, Why incre- did you point that out? Incredible Hulk what? TV series. It was incredibly unnecessary. That was an... <laughs> Why? Why? Um, the, this can't be right. The Incredible Hulk from 1977, right? Yeah. 1978. So there was five seasons, but it says number of episodes 13. I don't think that's right. That's what he was telling me. <laughs> Imagine. Uh, 80 episodes plus five TV movies. Oh, wow. Crazy. Yeah, no, I watched a lot of them. I watched a lot of them with Lou Ferrigno and uh, Bill Bixby. Yeah, that's cool, man. Bill Bixby transforms into Lou Ferrigno. Great music. Great music. That's the highlight, I feel like, of that show, the music. Yeah, and they call him David Banner. Instead of I know. Bruce Banner, because what, what was the quote? Something is like Bruce is a little bit too gay or something. Like, wasn't it literally something stupid? That was like the that? thing. Yeah, they yeah. thought that that was a, the 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 name Bruce was too gay. It's ridiculous, <laughs> unbelievable, <laughs> unreal. Yeah, and people were mental back then. They still are. Yes. So his name was D- Bruce as well, but it was his middle name. They just put it into his middle name. It's so um, stupid. Yeah. Take a look at David Banner, Michael. <laughs> so dumb i know it's, good stuff. it's so dumb but i, yeah. I kind of love it and uh i feel like most of our audience anyone listening is probably lost at this point about mm-hmm. what we're talking about because you just pointed out poop fetish yeah randomly <laughs> and then went to an arrested development quote connected to the marvel universe this is the show you're listening to folks thanks for joining us it's all connected baby it's all connected okay adrian yeah Speaking of Marvel, you watched that new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer, dude? Oh, yes, I did. Mm. Yes, I did. And was it good, Adrian? I'm going to ask you first. Was it good, Adrian? Um, I liked the trailer. I don't like it as much as the first one. And I feel like mm. they they showed a lot, like almost too much, um, mm. which was a little bit disappointing. But I still think there's plenty of surprises. Mm. But I don't know, like in comparison to that first trailer, I just don't think it's as good. The, I think the hype around that first trailer was way cooler and way, way more exciting. And this one just kind of revealed more things. I had a lot of thoughts on who like might be in it. Um, and I even mentioned that 
But uh, yeah, I don't know. It just kind of like confirmed. So you think uh, Mr. McGuire and Garfield, who hates Mondays, is going to be in this movie? Oh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Mm. Yeah, like um, I really thought that the trailer was unnecessary. And, and did it show too much? That's something to be determined later. That's what I would say in terms mm-hmm. of that trailer. I think, and I've, and I've actually heard other people that I work with, they've said the same thing, it showed too much. But we don't really know because we didn't watch the movie yet. So that's impossible to know for sure. I just think it shows too much in, in the context of why do you need to show anything because you mm-hmm. just showed the last trailer and it hyped everyone up to the nth degree. Why do you need to show anything else? Mm-hmm. It's just, I don't know. I think I, these companies, these production companies, Disney, Warner Brothers, they need to take a hard look at why they're making trailers in the first place and mm-hmm. realize that you don't need to reveal anything if you've already revealed that Alfred Molina, Doc Octopus, is going to be in the movie. You don't need to do much after that. It's done. You threw Doc a freaking, Doc. you know what I'm saying? You threw, you threw a grenade, you threw a, a green goblin grenade into the mix. Mm-hmm. We We get it. It's 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 cool. We don't need to see the like the 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 big you know set pieces. It's we're got we're good. Yeah, it seems like we're seeing the like the final act, like that big fight at the end of the trailer yeah. there. And why? And uh, you know what? You know what? It kind of reminded me of Simon. It's a little bit inside baseball, but it's funny because it's still Spider Man. But um, sorry, uh, Ken, in advance for talking about video games. But remember when they um, showed off the Spider Man like PS4 game? Mm. and they like showed off so much of it and then the final trailer literally showed like the the final act of the game like with like the sinister six yeah that was shocking yeah and everything like that and i was like why are you showing this and that that like this new no way home trailer reminded me of that so much but i was like i still really love that game i think that game's amazing and there's still like quite a few surprises but i just remember necessary like Like, it's the first spider-man game everyone's excited for spider-man like as a, as a PlayStation exclusive, what was the mm-hmm. purpose? It's just odd. It is odd. I, I don't know. It just seems strange. And uh, um, Tom Holland, obviously who plays Spider-Man, he specifically said this was the tip of the iceberg, which is why it leads me to believe that you are actually correct in your hype trainedness mm-hmm. that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield might indeed be in this movie. They are in this movie, man. There's no way in hell. Yeah. There's no way in hell they're not in this. It seems likely at this point. And uh, yeah. it makes me excited because that's the the dream, you know? Mm-hmm. It's the dream. But why show this? It's just so stupid. It's just so yeah. stupid. I want, I want to be surprised. It's fun to be surprised. And there's already leaks ah! and things like that. What the hell? Did I surprise you? You did. Because we're in the middle of a podcast and you're yelling. You're screaming, yeah. He said that it's fun to be surprised. I just wanted to spread a little fun in this episode, man. A little bit, a little bit, of, bit of cheer for you. No, no. I, it's fun to be surprised while I'm watching a film or a TV show. Ah, you know? okay. Yeah, fair enough. Not when you interrupt the middle of my sentence. God damn it. <laughs> uh, what was I even saying? Oh, Tom Holland. I don't remember. Tom Holland had an interview with GQ magazine. Mm-hmm. And he said some weird things, and it it it, it feels reminiscent, not to speak about video games, but it's a movie now, of that Uncharted interview that he had, um. you know, that interview where he said like, Nathan Drake, I had to be a very stoic character for Nathan playing Nathan Drake in the new Sony's Uncharted movie. Yeah. And I don't know, I wish I wasn't so stoic. I was like, me too, Tom Holland. Yeah. <laughs> Because he's not a stoic character. Nathan Drake is just not a stoic character. And that's all evident if you played the first like five minutes of the game. Mm-hmm. How much research did he do for the role? Apparently not much, man. Apparently not much. For that role. But anyways, I, I, I digress. He specifically said for this one, and this is again why I kind of find it reminiscent of that interview. He said, quote, maybe it is time for me to move on. Maybe what's best for Spider-Man is that they do a Miles Morales film. I have to take Peter Parker into account as well because he is an important part of my life. If I'm playing Spider-Man after I'm 30, I've done something wrong. Hmm. It's like he's not enthused anymore. Yeah. The first interviews with um, Tom Holland when it came to Spider-Man after Civil War and after the first Spider-Man no, uh, Homecoming movie, he was pretty excited. And he kind of said that he would 
play this role until he was 100. I think that's what he said, actually. I might be wrong, but he, he alluded to the idea that he would play it forever. It, it, like they'll, they'll have to rip the costume off of him is what I mm-hmm. kind of understood. And now it's kind of like not that way. And it's interesting that that's kind of happened. Like he's some kind of like bitter old man at the ripe age of 23. Uh, how old is this guy? 24? 25? He's 25. I just, I just looked it up. 1996. No, I got it on the, on the, on the last, the last guess, but Amy Pascal, the executive from Sony said, I've talked to him about doing like a hundred more. Like she's referring to Spider-Man films. I'm never going to make Spider-Man movies without him. Are you kidding me? That's what she said <laughs> about that. So I don't know. That's like a opposing opinion. I just feel like he could just drop out because also there was another interview a little while ago in which Holland specifically said that this is the last of the homecoming trilogy and that mm-hmm. there'd have to be a really grand idea to even have him come back and play Spider-Man. And I instantly thought, are you, do you not know that this is a money-making machine? Like, you know, this is a business, right? They're not going to just let you leave. Yeah, exactly. It's like, like Sony, you're going to pay him. It seems naive. Yeah. Like it, the, they will literally just give him like millions upon millions of dollars to keep him. Like they'll be like, dude, you can't go. <laughs> you can't go. Here's an extra like $5 million. I'm like, okay, you know. He like, can go if he wants he, to, but it's just strange that like he, 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 I don't know, he thinks that they wouldn't want to make another movie. Even like the fact that they, they teased Venom as like a connecting, connecting Venom to his universe mm-hmm. recently. And I feel like that that, aspect that that's happened it means that like you're in it for the forever you know for the end end game i don't know it, oh oh there's also that as well i don't know i think i mentioned this a couple episodes ago that my housemate thought that there's no way that venom is not going to be in this movie and now i kind of also think that too i'm well, not sure like, yeah I, i'm kind of confused because what's the what are they hinting at imagine imagine the toby Maguire and andrew garfield are not in this movie but venom is and be like, I what the just, fuck? <laughs> see that coming yeah like it's interesting because there's we see five villains in that new trailer we see the lizard from amazing spider-man we see sandman from spider-man 3 we see obviously doc ock spider-man did 2. we see sandman yeah but it wasn't it didn't it wasn't that the face of jamie fox we saw like what wasn't jamie fox's face inside that like misty fog i guess sand as you call it i don't know i no, thought like, that was jamie I, I, fox no man, like you see, well, you see Jamie Fox as Electro with like the, but not blue. Um, but what's Amazing the giant Spider-Man face too. in the? That's Sandman in the sand. The Sandman from Spider Man Three. Yeah, I don't know if it's the same actor coming back. I don't think that's been announced because we only see the Sand Man, but the Sandman's in it. Okay, so it may or may not be Thomas Hayden Church playing Sandman. You want to watch the trailer right now? You want to put this on pause? Watch I'm the looking right up the, I'm right now, I'm looking up the, the face yeah. because I don't recall like, hmm. But yeah. So like there's five villains, right? So Electro, Sandman, um, Doc Ock, um, Green Goblin, and who am I missing right now? Lizard. Yeah, I'm foolish. I don't know why I thought that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, yeah, I have no idea why. That was a stupid suggestion. But yeah, that doesn't look like it's the same actor. Yeah, I don't know. Because we only see Sandman. So they may, may have recast the role? It's possible. But uh, again, there's five villains, right? And like Spider-Man's all about the Sinister Six. Like that's the thing. So it's it, it's honestly possible that Venom will be that sixth character. Shit. That's the, that's the, that's it. Yeah. But, but think about how stupid that is. How can you even make him a villain? He's not been a villain in the two movies he's been in. So make Venom a movie in those movies. Sorry, a movie. Did I just say make Venom a movie in those movies? Yeah, you did. I'm tired, dude. It's that's okay. that's ridiculous. Anyway, make him a villain in his movies first, and then introduce him into Spider Man. He's mm-hmm. not been a villain to the point where he stopped. He stopped Venom, like Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock, stopped the Venom symbiote from killing a person who was robbing a woman. Mm-hmm. Like he was clearly a bad guy. Like he wasn't, you know, didn't deserve to die. You know, mm-hmm. on an ethical standpoint, but he is in a Marvel movie, and he's supposed to be a bad guy, apparently. Mm-hmm. So how how did he get corrupted to just decide that he's going to hurt? Oh man, it's going to be so bad. I have this feeling this movie's going to be bad. I just have this weird feeling. This is going to be a thirty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't think so, man. I'm confident. I'm confident. Mark Webb ha- has yet to fail us. Mark Webb did fail us 
Honestly, yeah, no. that's <laughs> why the movies were taken away from Mark Webb. And I think you mean John Watts. I do. I do. <laughs> as soon as I said, I was like, wait one second. That's not right. Although, to be, to, to be honest, and in your defense, Mark Webb is the greatest name for a Spider-Man director that there ever was. Mm-hmm. There's so, no doubt about that. I thought There's that was no made doubt. up at the time. I was like, yeah. wait, Mark Webb. That's not the guy's name. <laughs> he's, he's directing Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield. Mm-hmm. That can't be right. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm worried. I'm worried. It's not about John Watts being, you know, John Watts has been great so far. Homecoming and Far From Home have been awesome. But I just have a feeling that it's not up to him. Although he did call it the end game of Spider-Man movies, so there's a good chance he's not exaggerating and he believes in the movie he's made. Well, that's good. But who knows? What do you mean? What do you mean that's good? We don't know anything, Adrian. As long as he believes in himself. Are you not worried? Nah. Yeah, my anxiety's flaring up right now. Really? For this? Oh, I'm sorry, man. Anyway. Okay. Pop a couple Zans, as they say. No, no, no. Not necessary. Uh-uh-uh. But on the train of Disney, let's just go, you know, Disney is involved in the Spider-Man movie and the Spider-Man universe. Mm-hmm. It's probably the reason why maybe the meddling doesn't exist and this movie will be good. Um, but then again, Disney's doing meddling of their own. So mm-hmm. it's not that crazy. Because apparently, uh, Matthew Baloney, who was the former or f- former uh, editor from the Hollywood Reporter, uh, mm-hmm. the the you know the famous publication, mm-hmm. uh, he's specifically not there anymore at the Hollywood Reporter, but he's working for a we- uh, website called Puck, and uh-huh. he reported that the Rogue Squadron delay is actually because of creative differences with Patty Jenkins, the director, and mm-hmm. the Disney executives who are in charge of Star Wars. I see. Which is kind of shocking because the the thing that they, you know, the press release that went out about that was saying that the reason why Rogue Squadron is being delayed is because of scheduling conflicts with Patty Jenkins and not creative differences. And it seems like they just keep shelving project after project, which is what Matthew Baloney is pointing out specifically. It's kind of a, a joke in, in, like, in, in certain circles that they just keep shelving, for instance, the Ryan Johnson Star Wars movie. They shelved... Uh, this movie and then they, they also the, the game of thrones guys they were gonna make one yeah benioff and weiss had to well they decided to just bail on the project that they were working on because mm-hmm. of some reason yeah. and uh, baloney's saying it's a reason of like serious meddling like disney just wants to have have it their way or no way and it's a very specific way that they want indeed well yeah i mean like um um uh... What, what what are those two guys' names that made, made into the Spider Verse? Miller, oh Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, uh, those guys. Um, like they were they were originally making the Han Solo solo movie called Solo: A Star Wars Story, right? And they were kicked off. That's a good example too. That uh, yeah. I believe Baloney points out in that article. Yeah, yeah. So they kicked off, and Ron Howard took over that movie. Exactly. And uh, I like that movie actually. So it's not bad. Not the a, more I like think about it, the, I think of it fondly. Right, but you kind of want. I I mean, I kind of wonder what mm-hmm. would have been like if it was Lord and Miller finishing off that film. So yeah. it's interesting that they're just not, uh, not allowing the, you know, the greatest fighter pilot movie to ever be created to be created, which mm-hmm. is, I, I believe, I think I'm paraphrasing, but that's, I believe what Patty Jenkins called rogue squadron. She said that it's going to be the greatest fighter pilot movie ever made. That's cool. It's cool, but it's also not going to happen. So yeah, for- it's also uncool. <laughs> To be fair, like I honestly forgot this movie was even happening until uh, the, the story was brought up. So wasn't it the first one in the, on the docket though? Like, what else are they working on? Like, what other Star Wars movies even in the works? There's nothing else. Yeah, I think there's like an untitled one for what 2023, isn't there? Wasn't that this one? They just oh. didn't determine that it was going in that slot. I thought this was. I thought this was coming out first. That's kind of what the impression was because it's the only one we have. Oh, They're- you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I think you are right, because I, I started typing Star Wars 2023 and Rogue Squadron immediately popped up. Yeah, so there's like no Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. It's funny, when I mentioned this to other people, a lot of people just were like, oh, good, I don't care about this. I don't want any more Star Wars. And I was like, why? I don't I don't quite understand that. But there's also, again, anytime you bring up like, oh, there's an, the Marvel movie was canceled or it's gotten pushed back. Oh, good, there's too many, there's too many superhero movies. They need to make something else. They it's need like, to make another thing that's not Star Wars. It's like, shut up. You don't go to the movie. Did you watch like like when was the last time you went to the movies to watch something different, huh? You you constantly complain. You, you you fucking bitch. You just complaining about this shit. There's so many movies to watch. Yeah, there's lots of other options. Yeah, 
But yeah. alas. Well, I think the people who are complaining about it also probably just don't go to the movies at all. They yeah, just go, don't go to the theaters. Just something to complain about. They're just complaining about how many there are. I don't know. I don't think right now, especially, that Star Wars movies are oversaturated. In my opinion, that we, we've just in a spot where we haven't seen a Star Wars movie for since 2019. And like, there's nothing planned for the future. So I, I don't yeah. think you can be oversaturated when there's nothing really even coming out at all. Yeah. So. And that 2019 movie, that was Rise of Skywalker. And that's a bad movie, Simon. It's a very bad movie. It's pretty I shitty. Movie. I think as long as you make good content, it doesn't really matter how much you release. Mm-hmm. Unless you market it like you did solo, in which case, yeah, mm-hmm. that, that, then it matters. I think that was a marketing, that was a tale of bad marketing for, mm-hmm. from what I understand. Because th- that was the reports coming out about that movie is that people thought that that was The Last Jedi. And so they were like, oh, I just saw this movie. So that's a pretty bad marketing if people think yeah. that if that's the report, that's the major problem with releasing it six months after The Last Jedi. Yeah. 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 Too bad. Too bad. Too bad indeed. I'm curious how this is going to play out. Me me too. Okay. Adrian, cool. what else have you watched this week? So you watched that Spider-Man, you know, you know the No Way Home trailer, which mm-hmm. I did as well. Kind of disappointing yeah. again that they, they did this. I just don't, don't think it's necessary and I hope they definitely don't release another trailer. But um, what else did you watch? Simon, I watched uh, two things this week, two two series. I watched a few other things, but I'm just not going to talk about them. But the first one is a little show called Wellington Paranormal, Simon. Oh, yes. And uh, this show is um, it's created by um, Jermaine Clement. Uh, Cle- is it Clement? Clement? Isn't it Clement? I think it's just Clement. There's an S. Is there? No, there isn't. There's no S. I'm on Wikipedia right now. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, it's, there isn't? It's, yeah, it's just Jermaine Clement. I feel like there's a story I definitely I wrote up that I added. You definitely use Clement. I might have. Yeah. Apologies to <laughs> Jermaine Clements, <laughs> who's definitely listening to this because he's from New Zealand. And this is yeah. the second most popular podcast in New Zealand. So apologies to Jermaine Clements. Clement. It's true, mate. Damn it. It's true. Um, but yeah, the show is created by both Jermaine Clement and uh, Taika Waititi. Um, it's a spinoff from What We Do in the Shadows, which is a brilliant movie. And it actually follows the two cops that are like briefly in that movie. Right. Um, and uh, this show's fantastic. It, you you follow these two cops around that work in like, you know, a New Zealand police department. And then there's Sergeant uh, who pretty much just task them to dealing with like these like paranormal things but uh it's uh it's absolutely hilarious the comedy is very akin to like what we do in the shadows uh like a very you know dry like new zealand sense of humor kind of like what taika ytd brought with korg into like the mcu as an example and just you know like these these cops that get, get into these ridiculous paranormal situations but are just so nonchalant about it and kind of just brush things off like you know like ah oh, that that person's out of their mind or whatever it's it's a really great show it's here on crave um because i re-upped my crave subscription so i could watch dexter week to week which i'm still watching really great um right. and you know i saw it on there and i was like i gotta watch this i love what we do in the shadows like with a passion and this is a again a, a spin-off that uh, jermaine clement is actually like a main writer on he, he has a lot to do with it and again it's it's fantastic man um if you I know you love what we do in the shadows. So like this show is worth watching. There's only six episodes in the first season. I think there's only 19 episodes in total. They're, they're on season three or they finished season three and each episode is only like 20, 30 minutes. So it's pretty bite sized. And I don't know. It's really good. It's, it's, it's fucking funny as hell, man. And uh, I'm really glad I'm watching it. I'm, I'm excited to continue watching it. And um, I think after I finish Wellington paranormal, I got to watch the What We Do in the Shadows series because that, again, is same universe, obviously, a spinoff from the movie. And um, I just don't know what streaming service it's on here, which is the issue. So I might just have to buy it. But yeah, it's it's really good. I, I recommend it, man. Do you have any interest in watch, watching the show? Dude, I got too much stuff on my plate. Well, I can't. I can't. Too okay. much. Then don't watch it. I feel you like know? you'd like it. but Yeah, I might. I might. I'll consider it. I'll consider it. What we do in the shadows, the series, it's on FX now here in Canada. So I guess I got to buy it. Yeah, that's the problem. Oh, God, I hate that shit. It pisses me off. But whatever. Anyways, uh, but yeah, that's that's one of the things I watched this week, Simon. Um, the other thing I watched is the new Apple TV Plus original series, The Shrink Next Door, which stars uh, Will Ferrell and Paul Rudd. Uh, I watched the first three episodes. I think the fourth episode just released. 
But yeah, I don't know. Uh, did you, have you seen the show yet? So yeah, I talked about it last week. Oh, yeah, I did, watched yeah, anyway. the first episode mm-hmm. last week, and I've watched the second episode uh, yesterday or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I'm taking it so slowly. There's yeah. a, there's a lot of shows all, all of a sudden that are kind of coming out and they're kind of releasing week to week. So mm-hmm. I've just kind of been, I don't know, trying to watch each one and. Um, but yeah, like I, I like the first two episodes. I guess you've watched an extra one then. So what mm-hmm. do you, what do you think? Is it worth watching the rest of the series? Um, I don't know. I'm, I don't really love it. I'll be honest with you. Like oh. I love the like actors attached. Like I, I love Will Ferrell. I think he's like a, a hilarious actor, but th- he's not really, he's, this is a way more a drama than a comedy. Like you mentioned last week and he's playing a fairly like serious role, like almost like this pushover, uh, guy. Um, and you know, Paul Rudd's playing like this, uh, this this therapist that is that seems to be taking advantage of Will Ferrell's character, and um, you know Catherine Hahn is also in it, who I think is the standout in this show. She's freaking amazing. Um, I really love Catherine Hahn as an actor actor, and uh, yeah, she's she's absolutely crushing it in this. But um, I don't know, like this show is good. I'm liking it. I'm curious to see where the story is going, but it makes me so frustrated. Like it actually just makes me angry. I'm like watching these characters talk and like how they're treating each other or, you know, like it it seems like Paul Rudd's character has like kind of these sinister motives going on whenever he's like making any decision and just Will Ferrell's characters, like ignorance is just beyond frustrating. And it, it actually just pisses me off. I'm like watching the show and I'm like, I'm enjoying it, but I'm, I'm mostly angry (laughs) watching it because it's like, how can you be this stupid? Like, how can you be falling for this stuff? It just seems odd to me. And again, Catherine Hahn's character is the character I really like because she seems like a very rational character. Um, It's based on a true story. Yeah. And and yeah, like, and there's apparently a podcast by the same name that like, you know, told the story. Right. Um, And yeah, they're just, I guess, bringing it to life on on the screen. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just frustrated while watching it. (laughs) Like, I want to continue watching it. I want to know exactly what happens. But at the same time, it's like, I'm not in a good mood when I watch it. (laughs) It's it's kind of the best way to put it. It it just pisses me off. Yeah, it's barely Uh, a comedy. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I I actually haven't checked the reviews. Let me check. How are they doing? It's 58 on Rotten Tomatoes. So I guess like uh, not too many people love it. What is with that and ro- like the Rotten Tomatoes and the the Rotten Tomatoes scores and Apple TV Plus shows? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. You have to admit, though, again, another show with incredible production values. Like, there's just oh, yeah. no expense spared in any one of these Apple TV Plus shows. I agree completely, honestly. Yeah, Apple TV Plus, like, yeah, like they, um, I don't know, like, yeah, they, they don't hold back at all. Like, again, this is, I think, only the third Apple TV Plus show I'm I'm watching. Uh, the other two being Mythic Quest and um, Ted Lasso, of course. But uh, yeah, all three of those shows have like very high you know, production value for sure. And it looks good. Like the, the show really does look good and it makes you feel, I don't know exactly what year it's taking place, but it it's, I want to say it's, it's like in the, the 80s, 80s, right? Yeah, 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 it's the 80s, right? And it, it feels like the 80s. It feels like 80s New York, although I don't really know exactly how 80s New York would feel, but it seems like that's how it would feel. Um and yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I am enjoying it enough and I think I'm going to keep on watching it. But at the same time, yeah, it's, it's just a little frustrating to watch. And uh, I'm I'm kind of more taking in the whole idea of like who Paul Rudd and uh, Will Ferrell are, are inhabiting. Same with Catherine Hahn. And it's, mm-hmm. I just like the idea of seeing those two guys kind of play off of each other as not comedic roles. Mm hmm. That's what's most entertaining to me because you just don't see that very often and you kind of you know these guys in to in the comedic roles that they've been in the numerous comedic mm-hmm. roles and they're mostly in comedic roles across the board um not always and, but very often and you know even them together in like anchorman and stuff like I that i know and that's yeah. what's i feel like so fascinating about it i feel like Catherine Hahn's more of like a mixed bag of like great performances that are either funny or not mm-hmm. but those two are not necessarily and that that is interesting to me alone like on a, like a a perspective of of how it's shot and how it's directed and how it's acted. I think that, that I guess that's the most entertaining thing, I guess yeah. for me, it is frustrating for me too. I, I, I am interested to see where it goes though, for sure. Like that it is intriguing of like, when will he snap out of it kind of thing? Like how, how far down the road is this going to go before? Like, you know what I mean? Before it, before it ends. Yeah, exactly. Before Will Ferrell's character, Marty is like not, 
completely taken advantage of to the complete to the nines. And so that that's the question. And that's the interesting thing for me. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because I thought, yeah, maybe this would be kind of a slow burn. But I feel like you understand Paul Rudd's intentions almost like even in the first episode, there's like a couple of red flags. And then, yeah, by episode two, it just seems uh, very obvious, at least for me. I like, don't know about the first episode other yeah. than the fact that they do like a flash forward. And I think mm-hmm. that, that gives it away. Yeah, fair point. But I don't think that anything in the first episode from my understand, like from what I remember – Gave it away in like the way he was acting in like the first therapy session as much because it looked like he was trying to help him by pointing out the, the fact that Marty is a pushover and that he is too nice and that he gives too much. So it looked like he was trying to help him. But the, I think that that's the he's building his trust in the beginning. And then again, I'm very interested to see mm-hmm. where it goes. It is frustrating, though. I agree. Speaking of Apple TV Plus shows, I finished the morning show season two Ooh. with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. And um I really like this show. It's interesting how it deals with the concept of cancel culture. That's kind of what it's focused on in like the last, in the, in the, well, not really the last three episodes, really the whole season. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of neat the way they do it. I don't know. Again, not a well-reviewed show. It's like 60% on Rotten Tomatoes overall for the first uh, two seasons. So mm-hmm. um, again, not well-loved by critics. It's just strange. There's just so many of these Apple TV Plus shows other than Ted Lasso that are not incredibly well loved but it does do interesting things that i don't think i've ever seen in a show and it deals with cancel culture in a way that i've never seen dealt with in a series like a fictional series it's it's kind of neat and billy crudup's character if i'm pronouncing his name right billy crudup most known from in, being in watchman mm-hmm. Zack snyder's watchman or other things but regardless he's amazing in this he's so good it, it, and i I consistently have said that he should play the Joker, and I I still think this. Like I think mm-hmm. he could play a really good Joker because of his. It's weird because of his performance as a, as an executive at this uh, UBA. You know the UBA, which is basically like a, a network, like a big fictional network mm-hmm. in this series, and he just does such a good job. He's he's literally captivating to watch. You just don't know what he's going to do next. Every time he's on screen, it's it's fascinating. And uh, there's so much drama in this, though. It's it's too much drama, I find. Like, they oh, just, really? They go from problem to problem. It kind of reminds me of Suits a little bit. And you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. There's always an issue. It, it's less than that, I find. That, like, it's just they're It start, the show kind of starts off with them in, um, uh, what am I trying to say? America. It, it does start off in America. No, like damage repair mode. What am I trying to say? What's the damage repair? Damage... Ah, damn it. There's, there's a phrase. Oh. There's a phrase for this, Adrian. Anyway, oh, regardless. Like damage control. A, thank you. Control. The damn word is control. Yes, thank you. Damage <laughs> control. They're in damage control mode, and they're just trying to fix the – there's this big bombshell thing that happens at the beginning of the, the first season, and they're just trying to fix this, and they just seem to never be able to catch up. Like They're just mm-hmm. constantly just trying to <laughs> just live a life of normalcy, and they just can't. And no one seems to be able to do that, and it's just like tragedy after tragedy problem after problem but it is entertaining and i do like the performances and again the production values are unbelievable some of the writing is a little bit dumb it's it, not d- dumb is a kind of a bad word for it but it's just not they're not it's not the greatest mm-hmm. none of the writing is as bad as the show c on apple tv plus that's good which we like we like that show my girlfriend and i but we stopped watching it because it's like there's other shows that are better and we we're on the last episode of the second season and we're gonna get to it but it's like there's just such the writing in that is just so bad at times that I'm just like I don't get it. It's just there's it defies logic. But the but the action sequences and again the production va- values, the choreography for fighting though is the best part of it. Um, and then you got Jason Momoa and Dave Bautista facing off of against each other, and that's just so entertaining. So I'm very conflicted on this one. Hmm. Anyway, point is, morning show, pretty good, pretty good, pretty drama filled. And uh, I kind of liked where it left off for season two. I'm kind of interested to see where they go with season three. Other show I was watching, Netflix's Tiger King 2. Oh. I don't know if you're going to end up watching that or not. It's not getting the greatest reviews because people just call it a rehash of what season one was. And a lot of the articles are kind of saying Tiger King should have just been left in the pandemic Mm -hmm. or left in the early days of lockdown or whatever. And uh, I don't necessarily agree. I do find that they're doing some interesting things with this. It's just not as interesting because it was so fresh with Tiger King 1. Mm-hmm. And it just 
it is a shadow of what it was, but I kind of expected that. And to be honest, this is it's like junk food is basically what it is. It's just oh, fair enough. It's just you're you're you know following these characters again that are just kind of wacky and in they're, they're so different, um, and so that that is so interesting to watch to see just see where they were left off and where they're going to go from here. And I, I, I don't think there's anything that massive that happens in the season though because I think we would have seen it on the news. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I actually watched the first two episodes of Tiger King too. Um, oh, okay. Uh, as well this week, um, I watched it with my sister and. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm interested enough to see where it goes. But at the end of the day, like, you're right. Like, the mystery that they're trying to solve, I know, wasn't really solved because we would have heard about it. You know what I, I mean? Know. That's kind of the yeah. issue with it. So, like, I'm, I'm sitting there and, and it's like, I know there's going to be probably no real payoff for this. And it's quite disappointing. And a lot of it is just, like, them talking to people and, you know, going to, like, Costa Rica and stuff. I think they do that in, like, the second episode. Because they're trying to find out if, you know, Carol, like what happened to Carol Baskin's first husband, like whether or not. Don Lewis, yeah. Yeah, Don Lewis, like whether or not she actually killed him or or like where he fled. And, you know, like there's like maybe he moved to Costa Rica, blah, 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 blah. And it's just a bunch of people being like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like he was here and then he just stopped coming here and I, I don't know where he would have gone. But he, I feel like he would have told us like where. Yeah, he it's like gone. all kind of hearsay. Like it's yeah. all like speculation. and It seems like they didn't solve solve anything. But the actually the third episode is probably the best one of the three from oh. what I – because we watched only three episodes so far. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would say that it's fu- – funny enough, it's the best one. And it does do speculation as well, but it does, it does show what they've been up to a little bit more than they did in the first two episodes in terms of what all these – individuals a lot of the individuals like don lewis's family carol uh, less so carol baskin because they, mm-hmm. they can't film her anymore because of the rights um situation but they yeah. they I, I did say actually speaking of that i did say a couple weeks back that i thought that they were going to try and be more unbiased against the fact or not not so biased towards the fact that she had killed her husband which it seemed mm-hmm. like the show is kind of insinuating that that had happened a little yeah. bit, and I feel like that's why a lot of again the audience believes that that is true, despite the fact that we don't know all the facts really. Mm-hmm. Um, I said that they were going to try and be more unbiased, but I'm wrong based on episode three. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> it's funny, like, but it, it does actually have some crazy like bombshell facts that I'm like I don't remember this from season one, so they they actually it surprised me. That's why I liked the episode three a lot better than episode one and two because there there are investigators working on this there's these new characters that they introduce like these this one guy who's like a, a internet sleuth he's like an armchair whatever detective or whatever and then mm-hmm. they introduced another guy who's like this almost like a he's a detective like a famous detective who's like a tv detective in some weird way not like a tv detective like uh, jim rockford from the rockford files but he's a he's a detective like a real detective who goes on tv if that makes sense yeah if, if- yeah, yeah, it makes sense, man. I got you. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it feels to me like making of a murderer. That's what this show kind of uh, feels like a little bit. The, the season two, I liked season two of making of a murderer, but it never felt as big because or grand because we knew that there was not. We would have known. We would have read on the news that you know, like if if the guy who was in the main guy in making of a murderer was let out of prison, we would have known that. And that's mm-hmm. the the key element because it's such a big high publicity case. It's still a very interesting show, the second season of Making of a Murderer, but it doesn't hold up potentially to the first season because the first season is shocking. Same mm-hmm. with this kind of thing. Yeah. It's truly shocking. And it, so far, it's just junk food. It's just kind of fun to watch. Yeah. I like junk food. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. All righty. Adrian, I think we should move on to the news. No. Oh, that's too bad. Let's begin with a small collection of more focused stories that have been particularly pertinent this week. Number one, as Publication Variety reports, Warner Brothers is preparing a Harry Potter reunion special called Harry Potter 20th Anniversary Return to Hogwarts. And it is meant to debut on streaming service HBO Max for January 1st, 2022. As the title suggests, the special is meant to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Harry Potter films, which was technically on November 16th, 2021. He, Harry Potter, cast members Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, and Rupert Grint, among many others, will be present for the special, alongside Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone director, Chris Columbus. The celebration will also consist of a collection of behind-the-scenes making-of type footage for the eight films of the Harry Potter saga. In a statement about the new special, Warner Brothers executive Tom Ashheim 
said, quote, It has been an incredible journey since the debut of the Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone film, aka the Philosopher's Stone film, Mm -hmm. and witnessing how it has evolved into this remarkable interconnected universe has been magical, to say the least. This retrospective is a tribute to everyone whose lives were touched by this cultural phenomenon. From the talented cast and crew who poured their heart and soul into this extraordinary film franchise, to the passionate fans who continue to keep the Wizarding World spirit alive 20 years later, unquote. HBO Max currently shares joint streaming custody of the Harry Potter films library with NBC Universal's streaming service, Peacock, which is where the films reside as of this taping. Adrian, what do you think about this new special coming out soon? Um, I think this is kind of neat. I wonder if we're going to get it here in Canada on Crave or something. I, I would hope so. But uh, I don't know. I, I think this is kind of nice. I know Chris Columbus also mentioned that uh, he wants to possibly, you know, bring all the kids back and and make, um, what is it, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child or whatever, which is like the stage play sequel to. Um, oh, I didn't notice that he said that. Yeah, I, I swear to God, I read that. Maybe I made that up. But I don't think I did. Um, but I don't know. I think this is kind of cool. Um, I, I like these kind of reunions. And I don't know. It's, it's interesting to see like how like how much these guys have changed. Like I, I can't remember if it was this year or last year. But I, I like to do like a rewatch of all the Harry Potter films. And it's all it's kind of like cute seeing these like people grow up slowly but surely uh, like throughout the, you know, eight movie run. And I don't know. Now they're like straight up like adults. Like they're in like their late 20s, early 30s. So it's kind of cool. I, I definitely want to watch this. I really love Harry Potter. Like I love those movies. And again, when I was rewatching them last year or earlier this year, I don't, again, I don't remember. I, I really like I, they hold a special place in my heart. And um, I don't know. I like that Harry Potter's still a thing. It's still, you know, something that's on everyone's mind and everything like that. And one thing I find kind of interesting though, is that if I understand this correctly, HBO Max, although it has like, joint custody it doesn't have the harry potter movies on the service right now am i correct about that it's only on peacock currently so it's currently on peacock yes that's correct yeah. but the thing about it is that they've been switching back and forth like like uh you know a mother and father for this series and <laughs> the use of joint custody is like divorced parents yeah that's basically what this is they're divorced parents it's a very unusual deal because they just Peacock just picked this up as they were going into Halloween season. So I'd imagine the reason why they're not doing this 20th anniversary special when the 20th anniversary happened on the 16th of November, the reason why that's not happening, and it's happening on the 1st of January, and I have a feeling that's a very specific date in which Mm -hmm. the movies come back to To HBO HBO Max. Max. Uh. That's what I'm thinking. I thought initially, because we talked about this many, many episodes of our podcast back, Mm -hmm. We, I thought that they were losing these movies, these eight films. They were losing them to Peacock, HBO Max was. They were mm-hmm. losing to them to Peacock like for a long time, like maybe three years. But it looks like they aren't losing them. They're like temporarily losing them and then gaining them back and then losing them again. It looks like every quarter one of them switches. That's what it looks like from what I was reading. Mm-hmm. We don't have these streaming services. Just to be clear out there, we don't have Peacock and HBO Max in Canada. That's just not something we have. We have – Crave TV, Bell's Bell's version of HBO Max, which is not as good. It's very good. It's not good. Yeah, it's it just good. got 4K. <laughs> it's just nuts. It doesn't have Atmos. <laughs> that's for sure. For like Dolby Atmos uh, sound. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They're they're slow. They're very. Yeah. They're they're behind at any given moment. But at the same time, it's been nice to at least have some of the movies that uh, that have come out to HBO Max, but never on the day and date release. Yeah. Which is good for us, honestly. It's good for the theater industry. It's better that Suicide Squad, the Suicide Squad, launched in theaters. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's better that Dune launched in theaters here because it forced Canadians to go to theaters, which it should have been in the States in the first place, honestly. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, that that is weird. And uh, that joint custody custody thing is – I've never heard of that in any other – I, I just never heard of that. I, it, we're, we're in like a streaming war, war now, like none other, because there's so many streaming services. But I just never heard of this concept of like mm. sending a property that's very popular to one streaming service and then bouncing back and then bouncing back again, like multiple times. Yeah. I wonder if that happens more in the states than it ha- happens in Canada for like for maybe a Netflix mm-hmm. Netflix property. Yeah, I mean we right. we do have quite a few like streaming services here in Canada now, but definitely not as much as the states. Like really, the main ones I feel like people use are. Netflix, Crave, Disney Plus. Yeah, that's really the main ones. And I guess like well, you Apple can TV use Plus. you can get Paramount Plus, and there's Apple TV Plus. Yeah, but like, isn't Paramount 
plus like a channel based one or is that its own app? Because like you can get like the Paramount Plus channel through Apple TV or Amazon. But like, is that like its own Paramount streaming Plus is, is CBS All Access. It's just a streaming service, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, fair point. Yeah. God, there's too many. Of them. But I wonder if like with Seinfeld, maybe it was bouncing back and forth. Now Seinfeld in Canada is on the Canadian, sorry. Is on the yeah, this is on the Canadian Netflix. Whereas it wasn't before. Mm-hmm. It was on Crave. Yeah, it was on Crave. Is it on Crave still? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I can find out. I can find Maybe there's out. joint custody there as well. I've seen like a lot of overlap actually between Crave and like Netflix. I've seen it at times. You can have the same show mm-hmm. on two different streaming servers. I don't know if you noticed that at any point, but I don't know if that can happen in the states or they disallow that. I don't know. I don't exactly understand. Yeah, Seinfeld's not on Crave, by the way. It's only on okay. Netflix. That's a huge show, though, so that's yeah. probably why. But anyway, I digress. I'm kind of excited for this a little bit. I don't know. It's kind of – these reunions just kind of feels like going to a high school reunion or something. It's kind of like – you're like kind of like trying to live in the past. I, I'm not I'm not sure I, I love this concept that mm-hmm. much in that I just – I would rather they do make a curse, the, the Cursed Child or whatever as a, as a film. That would be yeah. more interesting to me. I think this is cool, but the behind-the-scenes stuff, like – I think we've seen that in some respect, like with all the DVD box sets and, and stuff like that. It, it is neat, but it would be more interesting for me if they made another film with these characters. Um, don't revive Voldemort again like you did with the freaking Emperor and, <laughs> and Rise of Skywalker, though. Yeah, I honestly don't know the story of The Cursed Child. I know it's like very well regarded. I should have went, but we I would have had to have bought tickets in went well in advance in London. Like I was in London, like England, for a little bit, and and I saw the Cursed Child. We went to see, go see a play, and I ironically because we're Canadian, I, we saw Far from Far from Away. I think it's called, and that's like a <laughs> I didn't even know what it was about. And I was reading the pamphlet. I'm like, wait, Far from Away is about Canadians? <laughs> so a bunch of English actors. With with Canadian accents, I'm Why? like, what the? I was like, that's not what I want. That's not what I wanted. They did a great job, though. That was a really good production. But that's cool. I, I, I think it would have been really cool to have seen that play, like the Harry Potter play. Yeah, the Cursed Child. But anyway, we should go. Yeah, we should go to Eng- London, England, to watch mm-hmm. it. I think they yeah. brought it to Toronto, though. I think they brought it here too. Yeah, that's that seems right. That was Let's planned see. to happen, but then again, COVID hit, so I'm not sure. Everything changed when the COVID hit. right into us. Right into us, like Kenneth Stadelbauer wrote into us to tell us what happened to a, the cursed child in Canada. Mm. Sorry, I cut you off. Were you saying everything changed when what? The COVID nation attacked. Oh, okay. It's a reference to Avatar, the last year Mender. Yes. Yes, indeed. All right. Number two, as Variety reports, NBC Universal streaming service Peacock is developing a three-part docuseries following the history and success of the popular Barney Children's programs that ran from the 1980s until their cancellation in 2010. The Barney character was a pink and green dinosaur created by Cheryl Leach to spread messages of caring and sharing to children around the world. The series featured actor David Joyner in the Barney suit alongside a cast of mostly children. In a statement... About the upcoming documentary, executive vice president of NBC Universal's unscripted content, Rod Aisa, said, quote, Barney the dinosaur was a ubiquitous character for children and parents alike, and we are thrilled to work with the Scout Productions team to bring this three-part series to Peacock. This documentary is bound to captivate audiences like Barney has over the years, unquote. The docuseries is set to a debut in 2022. Adrian... I'm very curious why you chose this story uh, this week. Um, I'm curious that you have a connection with Barney. Yeah. I'm guessing. I used to watch it when I was a kid. Yes. I'm guessing you watched it as a kid. Yeah. Did you ever watch Barney as a kid? I did. Yeah. I watched yeah. it as a child. I did. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's good. I don't know. I, I just found this kind of interesting. I I um obviously stopped watching Barney eventually. And, you know. Oh, like what? Back in, back in 2010. I, when it, when I it was watched canceled. it every week. <laughs> Shit, man. Was, yeah. I just now watch, watch reruns. reruns. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I really enjoyed Barney and I, I'm just kind of curious about this documentary series. Like, I think it, it can be kind of cool. Like I, I remember her being a kid and you know, the song that I love you by Barney, the I love yeah, you, yeah. you love me. Like, yeah, I think, feel like they ended like pretty much every episode like that, but that song's a bop dude. I used to like, my mom would sing that to me before we're going to bed and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like, I just have a lot of nostalgia for Barney. It's like, I don't really remember it all that well. I was very small, but I do remember that song. It's like ingrained in my brain. And 
yeah. I don't know. Like I, I have a, I have a lot of nostalgia for this. So like, this is actually a docu series. I'm, I'm probably going to watch like as it airs or when it releases. I know it's going to Peacocks though. That song's a baby bop. Yeah, one would say. Oh my god, uh, this is a quick tangent, but you know, kids bop. Uh, you know kids yes, bop? I think it's so. Like, it's like kids covering like songs, like radio songs or whatever. It's just um, like a bunch of kids and like it was on like YTV. I think so. And it's literally just like the just clean version of like songs that they'll like just remake, but kids are singing it. I was talking to one of my coworkers today about it and like how cringe it was. And uh, yeah, I don't know. You just you just brought up like baby bops, but God, I freaking hate kids bop. It pisses baby me off. Baby bop is a character in Barney. Yeah, you know that. But I know. But I I, I thought okay. of kids bop because of that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. I just because you said it, the song's a bop, so I thought that anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So oh, oh, I'm over over explaining my joke with Simon Eady. Yeah. No, I uh, I am kind of interested in this. I don't really. I don't know. It's it's cool. I'm curious to see where they go with it. There's a there was a lot of controversy when the show was ended, right in 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, there was like a weird lawsuits that were happening, and like David Joyner, there was like reveals about him as a person, and I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm just curious about uh, yeah, like what what it's gonna dive into. I remember like some of the controversy, but uh, I honestly don't know if these are real memories. Like, wasn't there like something like he was like just drunk on set all the time or something like that? Or am I making that up? Uh... I, I, I don't honestly know. don't remember. He, he apparently like he he does like tantra or whatever. Tantra. Yeah, it's like that thing where it's like meditation through sex or whatever. He does have has like sex with like thirty different women. What the fuck? That's a new one. <laughs> I don't know. I was looking into it for this because I was like, what was the controversy for with Barney? And that's like his private life. So I'm not sure that why why would that matter? And really, I I don't know. Yeah. But um, you know. It's 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 you know he was a, he was like a tantra therapist or something like that. I, I don't really know how tantra works, so don't you know? I mean, you could write into us about that if you want, audience, but mm. telling us what tantra is. Are you looking that up or what? Yeah, I'm looking into it right now. Tantra sexuality meditation for intimacy. Interesting. Yeah, he's like thirty clients, which basically he has sex with them for meditation. Oh, that's dope. Good for him. Anyway, that was a thing, and then there was some other lawsuit about something else. I thought. Hmm. And there was, they were just dealing with a whole bunch of shit and then they just canceled it in 2010. They're like, they, I think they, they, they successfully kind of shuff, not shuffled it under the rug, but they were just like, we don't want to deal with this while it's on air. So let's just close it. And then I think that's how it ended. Like they were like, and then they came out after like, oh, okay, that's why they ended. If I recall correctly, hmm. that was a while ago, 11 years ago to be exact. Yeah. Wild man. So many years. Wild indeed. Okay. All right, Adrian, speaking of docu-series, Number three, as followed by publication The Hollywood Reporter, Discovery Plus is developing a two-part docuseries called Johnny vs. Amber that is meant to chart the dramatic breakdown of the relationship between actors Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. The series will feature video and audio recordings taken by the ex-couple, as well as interviews with the lawyers dealing with their various court cases. The first part of the documentary is designed to look at the situation from Johnny Depp's perspective, while the second is meant to take a look at it from Amber Heard's perspective. In a statement, Discovery describes the series as a, quote, international cover story from two polarized perspectives. Johnny's film will portray that he found himself married to a Machiavellian liar who would stop at nothing to protect her image, while Amber's film explores how she married the man of her dreams, only to see him turn into a violent, drug-fueled monster, unquote. Adrian, what are you thinking about this? We talked about the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard situation months back on mm-hmm. Split Focus, a film and TV podcast. Um, but yeah, you, you again, you chose the story. Curious. What uh, what drew you to this particular um, story? I don't know. I just find this like a, like interesting in general. Like it's awful, like what's going on and whether, you know, who's who's lying and who's not and like the whole the whole whole situation with it. It's it's very, it's it's messy, obviously. And I'm just kind of curious like how this documentary will break it down. It seems like it's trying to like not be a like bias towards one person uh, because obviously they're kind of splitting it up. They're doing the perspective from both angles, but I'm really curious to see how they're going to break it up. I still, I still stand by the fact that I just don't understand how Amber Heard is still just getting roles and all that stuff. And, you know, like e- even with all that controversy, all that stuff that came out about her and those like live recordings 
that just like it's just proof that she's not a good person whether or not johnny depp is also not a good person i don't know but it's just it, it just seemed like a very blatant double standard and, and it was a little bit frustrating for me to see this and even like when they were talking about aquaman 2 and everything like that it's like oh we're not gonna recast her like you know like she's important or whatever and it's like this like i don't know so I was johnny I, depp to this to the harry potter movies and exactly like it just didn't make sense to me and it's it's a it's frustrating and i don't know i'm curious how this documentary uh like docuseries i guess is gonna are, is going to break down this relationship and uh whether or not it will actually be as unbiased as possible and see it from both angles or if there is still going to be like a clear bias on whose side the documentary is on i feel like a lot of documentaries tend to be biased um so i don't know I, i'm very curious about this i, I just kind of wanted to bring it up i think this is going to be an interesting one and again another uh docuseries that i'll probably watch next year cool yeah they, i this makes me sad would be yeah. the would be the thing that i would say about this like the, the their dirty laundry is like aired for the world to see and then one person was canceled while the other was one was not, despite the fact that it's a she said, he said situation. Mm-hmm. It's just shocking. And I don't, I don't know. It's just disappointing though, that this had happened. You either cancel both of them, in my opinion, or mm-hmm. you cancel neither of them. That is the only way to do it. So the fact that he was recast in that Warner Brothers, Harry Potter, Grindelwald role, Mads Mikkelsen, who's a great actor, by the way. I love Mads. He's cast in that role. And I'm very, I'm kind of excited. I kind of, I have more of an interest to kind of watch the series because the, the, the part seems to, seems to keep getting recast, which I think is interesting. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it makes me sad because I feel like this documentary is not going to let this thing lie. And in the end, it's just going to hurt Johnny Depp's career even further while potentially unharming Amber Heard's career. Mm-hmm. And again, you either take them both out or you don't take either of them out Mm -hmm. i don't think that that's an unreasonable thing to say because you can look at it from both sides and it seems like it's just a really messy situation as you just said so i just don't understand it's it's almost would have been better for this to have been like not publicized at all when they tried to go to court like why bother with this like it just seems strange yeah i mean maybe one of them is lying but we don't know and i don't know i honestly think that we'll never know and that's what makes me sad about it because i just don't i feel like the more you bring this up and the more you make more documentaries about it and the more it comes up in the news it's it's just going to become worse for potentially just one of them yeah and it's weird because johnny versus amber i think amber gets to go last which is just not good for johnny depp again mm-hmm. you, you, wouldn't you want to make johnny depp the one who goes last who gets the last word simply i don't know maybe i don't know it's, it depends on which what the content is in each of these documentaries but you know, like you kind of maybe want him to have the last word just because he's kind of had the the short stick. Mm-hmm. Like he, he pulled the short straw, I should say. Yeah. So it's disappointing. It, it's I just agree. the whole thing is disappointing. And I don't think this is going to make it better for him. I think if you're quiet about it for years, for a few years, he'll, he can come back potentially and get his career back, which he seems to have lost. Mm-hmm. Well, she can just seemingly just continue with her career. Again, I'm not, by the way, I just to be very clear, I am not choosing a side at all. Like, we don't know. We don't know. And nobody knows. And yet, Hollywood has chosen a side. Mm-hmm. And it's just shocking. <laughs> anyway, that's my two cents. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, man. It, it doesn't make any sense. And it's it's unfortunate. Yes. It's sad. It's a sad. Sad. Story. And when you chose this story, I honestly was sad. I was like, oh, man, I got to talk about this. <laughs> I just feel sad about it. Sorry, man. Whoa. No, no, don't don't feel sorry. That's how the show works. You choose the three stories and uh and we talk about them. I, I put them in the I put them in the document, you choose them, and we and we discuss. And that's the that's the deal of Split Focus, a film and TV podcast. It's a good deal. The next deal for Split Focus is the montage. And so now we move on to the montage, a sequence of our show in which I briefly present the week's smaller news stories as Adrian delivers a brisk verdict. Number one, as followed by publication The Hollywood Reporter, Jenny Slate's online stop motion short series Marcel de Shell with Shoes On has been made into a full length feature film, and film distribution company A24 has acquired the rights to the movie. That's uh, that's neat. I mean, again, A24, uh, I feel like their track record in picking good movies is, is very is very good, so I'm curious about this. I never watched Marcel de Shell with Shoes On, though. You've never seen any clips for it? I don't think so. Maybe I have. It's very cute. 
it's definitely worth the, the watch. Just, just watch it like a few clips. It's actually where I first uh, like knew about Jenny Slate. Like I hadn't seen her in anything else before that. Number two, as Publication Deadline reports, Lethal Weapon star Mel Gibson is in talks to direct the fifth installment to the Lethal Weapon franchise. Wow, good for him. Number three, as Deadline reports, Servant creator Tony Baskalup and WandaVision executive producer Matt Shackman is making a workplace comedy for Amazon called The Consultant, and it's set to star Inglorious Bastards actor Christoph Waltz. Oh, damn. That's cool. I love Christoph Waltz. Number four. As Variety reports, actor Rockmond Dunbar has decided to leave the Fox TV series 911 due to its refusal to comply with 20th Television's vaccine mandate. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Number five. According to Deadline, Wolf of Wall Street actor Jonah Hill has been cast as frontman Jerry Garcia in director Martin Scorsese's upcoming biopic about rock band Grateful Dead. Oh, that's cool. Jonah Hill uh, going back with Martin Scorsese. My dad was actually watching Wolf of Wall Street the other day. Really good movie. I love that movie. Number six. As Variety reports, WandaVision actor Randall Park has been cast in Superstore producer Vanessa Ramos's upcoming workplace comedy series following the goings-on in the last blockbuster video store in the United States. It seems like a really good idea for a series, and uh, I love Randall Park, so. Number seven, as Variety reports, Netflix has made some further casting choices for the upcoming live action Avatar, The Last Airbender series. With lost actor Ken Lung cast as Commander Zhao, Kim's convenience store, Paul Sun Hyung Lee cast as Uncle Iro, and Nightwatch actor, Lim K. Su cast as Gyatso. It's uh, Uncle Iroh, by the way, and uh, I'm very excited for this. I'm actually curious. It's it, Again, I'm a little bit worried because the original creators left for creative differences, but the casting is top tier so far, so I'm in. Number eight. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the harder they fall actor Delroy Lindo is currently in negotiations to star in Marvel's Mahershala Ali starring Blade movie. The Blade movie is set to be directed by Mogul Mowgli director Basim Tariq. Cool beans, dude. I'm very excited for uh, this Blade movie starring Mahershala. Number nine, as Variety reports, coveted Jeopardy host LeVar Burton has been hired by Entertainment One to host their new Trivial Pursuit game show. Oh, look at him. Number 10, as noted by The Hollywood Reporter, the Party Down comedy series revival has officially been greenlit by network stars with most of its original cast set to return to their roles. Notably, actor Lizzie Kaplan will not reprise her role as Casey Klein due to her recent casting alongside actor Jesse Eisenberg in FX on Hulu's new Fleischman is in Trouble limited series. Oh, that's too bad that she's not coming back, but I'm glad most of the cast is coming back. I love Party Down. I feel like this is great, and it doesn't mean that she won't be coming back in the future if it's just like a little bit limited series. So hopefully she does come back, or at least cameos. And that concludes the montage. Boop, 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 montage. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Indeed, my friend. Just to bring up uh, randomly the story about um, 20th Television's vaccine mandate. Not to bring up the vaccine mandate at all. I'm not going to talk about it. But I just want to bring up, it struck me as odd, and it's consistently struck me as odd, that they chose the name 20th television instead of 20th century television. The name 20th television makes no sense. It's just called 20th television? Yes. They changed it to 20th television when they got rid of the Fox name. Like it's not 20th century Fox television, but why wouldn't it just be 20th century? They don't know what century, like century is not connected to Fox. Like why? I had, It's shocking. What does 20th television mean to anybody? Like the words, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it means, man. It makes no sense to me. Yeah, did you think I just forgot the word century in there? Yeah. For the write-up? No. No. We talked about this like many weeks back, but I feel like you forgot about it. I always forget everything. No. No, don't say that. Yeah. What's my name? What's my name? Say my name. Say my name. Say my name. General Kenobi. General Kenobi. Come all right fine i'll take it i'll take it i'll take it but i feel like that reference is again we're making like three references on top of one reference mm -hmm. and i i don't i fear that the audience will just think that we're fools 
Um, well, we are, Simon. Hold on. Ken made hold, fools of us at the beginning of this, this show. Hold on. The audience already thinks we're fools. Yeah, let's that's not, what I'm saying. Let's dude. not kid ourselves. Let's no, be not even real. just from that. Just the way we start. Just the way we started the podcast. I just started talking about how I was a dry boy. Okay. <laughs> you are a dry boy. Oh, boy. All righty then, Adrian. What do you got for me, buddy? What do you got for me? Oh, Simon, I got new releases for you, my friend. This is for the week of November the 22nd to November the 28th. Oh. It's a Monday to a Sunday, baby. Monday to oh. a Sunday. Oh. 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 Crazy. Good. Very good. Crazy good, man. Excellent. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Are you going to tell me the movies? I'm waiting. Oh, you're – well, you were – I just didn't want to interrupt you. You got, you know, the sweet – like like you were almost like about to introduce like a jazz band at a nightclub. Yeah, there was <laughs> – the sweet tones of Daybreak. I probably messed that up a bit. But. Okay. You did. You did mess it up, and I feel like, again, another obscure reference. Another obscure reference for the books. Adrian, what's coming out this week? Uh, so the first movie that's coming out this week is coming out on Monday, the 22nd, and it's a Netflix movie called Outlaws, and it's about teens doing crime. Oh. That's cool. Um, next up is a movie coming out on Tuesday, November the 23rd, and it's a movie called Boiling Point. This is uh, confirmed by Movie Insider and the Apple TV app. It's a video-on-demand movie that's actually rated very well. And it's a single take snapshot of what a head chef has to deal with on one of the busiest nights of the year. Oh, boy. Yeah, seems kind of neat, actually. I like that idea. I like movies that where it's like one shot, you know, like Birdman. Like, oh, it's literally a single take. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. I just thought you were trying to be, you know, creative with your writing here. Oh, I, oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Or that scene in the hallway with Daredevil. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Or the, but Birdman's the, a really good example. I think yeah. Birdman might be like one of my top movies of all time that i've ever seen it's really i just really cool. love it fantastic cast and everything too yeah i know it's amazing yeah i really like that movie um the next movies are coming out on wednesday november the 24th simon the first one is bruised which is a netflix original movie and it's halle berry's directorial debut about an mma fighter who sh- she's also playing making a comeback after a humiliating defeat indeed indeed yeah. A Boy Called Christmas is up next, and this is a Netflix movie, and the kid's name is not Christmas. His name is Nicholas, and it's literally in the Netflix write-up. What? His name is Nicholas. It's not his, his, He's not called Christmas. His name is Nicholas, Simon. What do you mean it's literally in the Netflix write-up? Like, from that sentence, that's the problem I have a problem with. Oh, like I heard the, what the... you said. Like, when I'm saying what, I, I know what you said. I got headphones on. It. It's all good. Said. I know what you said. Um, but, uh, no, like in, in the write up, they say like, oh, Nicholas is a boy, blah, 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 blah. As opposed to Christmas is a boy because the boy is called Christmas. Oh, they're liars is what you're they're saying. Liars. The title, the title of this is movie a... is a lie. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, maybe it's a different boy that meet, maybe Nicholas meets Christmas, the boy. It's possible. Actually. I didn't really look too deep into it. Christmas, the dry boy, a dry boy called Christmas. That's really dumb. Anyway, I'm just mashing some shit up now. What, what's the next movie coming out? Come on. Robin Robin. This is a Netflix original movie about a Robin Robin Robins. What? <laughs> Robin Robin. It's a Netflix original movie about a Robin Robin Robins. What does that mean? That sentence doesn't make any sense. It makes sense. It's Robin no. is Robin Robins. A Robin. Like a bird? Yeah. Robin. Like, oh, like Robin I'm, with an – oh, I'm reading it from here, and you put a capital for robbing. That makes no sense. Like I'm robbing you. Yeah, but why would you why, – why, okay, let's say you're robbing me. Would you would you capitalize the word robbing in that sentence? If I'm doing uh, title casing, yeah. But – okay, all right. That's not even what the movie's about. I actually don't know what the movie's about. I just saw an opportunity. I wanted to write a Robin, Robin, Robins. So we just had this conversation about nothing for like yeah, three minutes? Exactly, okay. dude. Anyways, the next movie on this it's list It's not is... title casing. You didn't put the last R on, in Last Robins isn't even capitalized. I'm aware. Bloody liar is what you are. Yeah, I'm a bloody liar. Just like Netflix is for calling a movie a boy called Christmas when the boy's name is Nicholas. No, Nicholas meets Christmas. That's what happens. Oh Let's move God. on. 
Okay, 8-Bit Christmas is up next. This is confirmed by trailer in the Movie Insider website. It's coming to HBO Max, and it's a Christmas movie about a kid trying to get an NES in the 80s. Maybe it was an SNES. An NES, which stands for? Nintendo Entertainment System. Very good, thank you. But it might be a super Nintendo Entertainment Systems. I'm not a big fan of acronyms, Adrian. I don't know if you know that, but I don't love acronyms. Oh, I know that about you. Yeah. I just feel like it It, it, it just, all it does is it seeks to divide. And it doesn't really, it doesn't explain enough. Communication <laughs> so. is key, Adrian. Communication is key. Yeah, it's, and you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But that this movie stars Neil Patrick Harris, actually. I think he's like telling a story to his kid about his Christmas trying to get that NES or SNES. I forget which one. Hmm, that's neat. Yeah. All right. I wonder if this is going to come to Crave since it's a HBO Max movie. Uh, I hope so. It's yeah. not one of the, the films that's supposed to be day and date in theaters, right? No, it, it is not, as far as I can okay. tell. So this is more like uh, American Pickle. Yeah, exactly. One of your favorite movies of 2020. I didn't like that movie. I actually didn't like it. But uh, you're, 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 you're missing the point. And my point was American Pickle launched on HBO Max and on Crave in Canada at the same time. True. Same with Zack Snyder's Justice League. Right, exactly. Let's not you know, look at the details of whether you liked or didn't like American Pickle, which I know I like we that. both know you love that movie. Anyway, what's the next movie coming out? The Shuru, the Shuru Process. This is confirmed by Movie Insider on the Apple TV app. There's a video on demand movie, and it's about a failing New York journalist who becomes infatuated with a guru who helps them turn their life around. Okay. Yeah. And the next three movies are all coming up to theaters. Wednesday releases oh. for the theaters. It's weird. This is two weeks in a row where movies are coming out on a Wednesday in theaters. I'm kind of confusion. That is strange. Yeah. And the first one is Encanto. It's coming to theaters. Oh, Encanto. Encanto. And yeah, it's coming to theaters. Um, I'm kind of excited for this. I, I want to watch this. It looks good. Looks good. Yeah, it does look good. Yeah. A Disney a Disney original movie. Mm-hmm. An animated, animated film. Adventure. What's the house doing? Everyone has powers. Except for, except for the main character, Encanto is her name, and finding a power is the is is the game. Is her name Encanto? No, it's definitely not okay. Encanto. Yeah, I didn't think so. Encanto. I don't know what her name is though. You want me to check it out? You want, want me to do my famous Google segment or my famous segment called "I'm going to Google this right now"? Sure. Why don't you do that? Encanto, the Madrigals. Blah 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 blah. Mirabelle. Her name's Mirabelle. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for that. Fact checked. No worries. Fact checked. I wonder if it's going to release on Tuesday. It does release on Tuesday, technically, because the early showing. Hmm. I work until nine on Tuesday. Hmm. What else is coming out? What else is coming out on that Wednesday? Ooh, Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Resident oh, yes. Evil 4. You love that trailer. Yeah, it's not a good trailer. I still want to watch this movie. I'm still going to watch this movie. We're not Blonde song. Wow. Yeah. Great. Great stuff. It just doesn't fit. It made no sense. It, it fit no to sense. me, actually. I watched when I watched it again, I kind of liked it even more. I don't know. I didn't mind that trailer. You really didn't like it, but No. I also have no connection to that series, but I feel like that's not your criticism of that of the trailer. You just didn't like it because you thought it was bad CG. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Really bad CG. Yeah. I think I'm gonna watch that. It releases on Wednesday. Do you do you work Wednesday? You wanna watch this movie with me? <sighs> Isn't the priority either in Canto or the next movie you're about to say? House of Gucky? That's so dumb. <laughs> That's such a dumb joke. I know it is. I saw an opportunity. I took it, man. That's, man, that's, that's, a, that's a, the dumbest <laughs> joke you've ever made on this podcast. House of Gucky, the Ridley Scott movie. House of Gucky. Yeah. Coming to a theater, theater near you. <laughs> yeah, that one. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's I do so want to watch that movie as well, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, I didn't see that coming. I don't know how. Anyway, yeah, I actually I do want to watch all three of these movies. Yeah, I really want to see House of Gucci. Now I'm saying it weird. House of Gucci. I I do really want to see that. Like that that is an all star cast. Ridley Scott Mm -hmm. pretty much rarely misses. Like he does have some. I feel like that guy in general, director Ridley Scott, has an incredible range. Just that's Mm -hmm. his. It's just like talent. His his range is ridiculous. He he'll go from like. Science fiction to House of Gucci and anything really in between, except for maybe animation and not Marvel mm. movies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Another director just like bitching oh about Marvel. Oh, my God. Like, Why, though? So Why? Because his movie's coming out. 
Exactly. James Gunn was correct. It's funny. I thought yeah. that that was an exaggeration when James Gunn said specifically about uh, Scorsese having complained about Marvel movies being whatever theme park films just before Irishman came out, that the reason why Scorsese did this is because he was trying to create publicity for his movie that was about to come out to Netflix. And I was like, ah, that could be true. And then Denis Villeneuve just did it right after that. Like literally, mm -hmm. it pretty much like months after that, Denis Villeneuve did the exact same thing for Dune. He called, what did he even call Marvel films? He said they were boring or I don't know what, what he even said. What did he say? I don't know. But now Rid Ridley Scott called him boring as shit and the, the writing yeah. is bad. It's like, who cares? But it's just so dumb because it's like you're, again, I, I say this a million times. You're generalizing thir like 25 films. Like, do you not mm. see the disrespect to your fellow directors and creators out there that are making these movies? Like, that actually do believe in what they're making? I just don't understand. Does he, has he never met, like, any of these directors? There's, there's, like, I don't know. How many directors have made Marvel films? Like, 15? 700. 12? Yeah. Set, why, wait, why are you going up to that high? It's not 700. It's a lot of directors. It's just shocking to me. Because they say that they're all boring and they all have bad writing. And then claiming right after that that Blade Runner is a – he claims that Blade Runner and another movie – a couple other movies, they're, they're, they are superhero films. So the, his superhero films are good and they're not boring. But all of the superhero films – it's not – so I told this to my brother and he's a big fan of Ridley Scott. And he said basically, well, he's not really saying that they're all bad. It's like – but he is. If you read the quote, he, there's nowhere in there that he's saying some of them are good or – you know, there's nowhere in there. It's kind of cut and dry. Like he's just saying that they're boring anyway. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. It is. It's getting tired. It's getting tired. Yeah. Stop doing that. Stop it. And I would agree, by the way. Let's just be clear again. If you haven't listened to this podcast before and you think we're really biased toward loving Marvel movies, I would agree that a lot of these movies are retreading, retreading the same water over and over again. Like Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. It's not a boring movie by any stretch, but it's – it is retreading the Iron Man water. Like, it is the same movie. And I was thinking about this, actually. You know what other movie retreads the same water? And it's by uh, Christopher Nolan? No. Which movie? The Marvel formula is actually kind of pretty existent in The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Did you realize that? Um, no, not really. He fights himself. It's about self-discovery. And, and like, yeah. he's, he, like he, he's, you know kind of on a high he takes a like a, he takes a big loss and then he has to fight to win after like really just fighting him he's fighting the his his willpower is basically what it's about and that's kind of what all these marvel movies are it's like overcoming yourself and to overcome yourself you're fighting someone who has very similar powers which in this case bane literally is sort of him like he literally they grow up in the same where they they they're in the same kind of idea, like because they're both part of the League mm -hmm. of Shadows. Yeah, which is interesting. I never really thought yeah, of that, that from that perspective before. Yeah, that's a neat perspective, man. I, I've never thought of it from that angle at, at all, either. With that being said, you can kind of you can. I feel like that's a that's a basic skeleton you can find in like hundreds of movies. But I just feel yeah, like exactly. that that's that's kind of interesting. It, it, imagine Christopher Nolan said that he he thought that superhero movies were boring. Mm. Considering he's made three of them, man, I would love for Christopher Nolan, yeah, to like, yeah, just jump back into like the superhero stuff. He, it's such good movies. God, I love the Dark Knight trilogy. I was actually talking about Dark Knight, the Dark Knight trilogy today at work with one of my coworkers as well. So good. Anyways, um, yeah, so th those are those movies. Uh, <laughs> now the rest of the movies are coming out on Friday the twenty sixth of November. Uh, the first one is A Castle for Christmas. It's a Netflix original movie about a woman that falls in love with a castle and fights a duke over it. Whoa. Yeah. Spoil of Bratz is up next. Uh, and this is a Netflix original movie, and it's about you. <laughs> Got him. Oh, shit. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's about a rich father that tries to teach his greedy kids a lesson by pretending he lost all of his money. Oh, my God. That is about me. What? No, that has nothing to do with me. Really? That's what I meant. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have anything to do with me. That's what I said. It doesn't. Does not? It was a joke. I was making a stupid joke. Does not not or just does not? Like the rest of this podcast. Oh. This entire episode's a joke, man. Oh. 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 Self-deprecating humor is always the best. Until it's not. Twas the fight before Christmas, Simon. Uh, this confirmed my movie entire uh, movie. 
Jesus Christ. Movie Insider and the Apple TV app, as well as the trailer. This is actually an Apple TV Plus original movie. It's a documentary about a guy that's dead set on celebra- celebrating Christmas in the most extravagant way. But his neighbors are like, hell no, man. Like, what the hell? You're taking it too far. You're out of your goddamn mind. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I watched the trailer today. I was like, wow, this seems wild. Anyways. Uh, an Intrusion is up next, Simon. And it's confirmed by Movie Insider and the Apple TV app. This is a video on demand movie. And it's about a person that begins to terrorize a family. And the father of, of said family thinks it's because of a secret he's been keeping from his family, as well as law enforcement. <gasps> What's the secret? I don't know. Just guess. Uh, He's having an affair. Yeah, that's a fair guess. I don't know what it is. I was just curious. He's a murderer. Ladybuds. He's a murderer, you think? He's a murderer, but then there's another guy that's terrorizing him? Why wouldn't he just kill that guy? Because that guy is the brother of the guy he murdered. Whoa. And he feels guilty. Damn. That seems like a good movie. We should write a movie. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Right now. Hmm. We just did. We just wrote it. Yeah, we're done. The basic skeleton is done. Yeah. That's all you need. That's all you need. We'll just wing the rest of it. Ladybuds is up next. It's confirmed by Movie Insider and the Apple TV app. This is a video on demand movie. It's about six women that decide to jump in on the dope business when weed is legalized in 2016 California. It's a documentary, by the way. Wow. Yeah. Ayer. A-Y-A-R. Ayar. Ayar, mateys. It's confirmed by Movie Insider and the Apple TV app. Uh, this is a video on demand movie, and it's about a, a Latin American uh, who returns home to meet her daughter, but her mother refuses to let her see her daughter because of COVID. Could that have been in- <laughs> insensitive that you said, I are mateys? Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> because, the name, definitely. because the name could be like a common name in Latin America. It's possible. Yeah. I thought it's about possible, that, but right? I was like, that's not a common name for me that I know of. But then I, yeah. I heard you pause for a brief moment <laughs> before you started describing the movie. And I feel like you started thinking about it. Hmm. Yeah, I was like, should I was like, should I have said that? Did I make a weird choice yeah. comedically? Hey man. You live and you learn. You live and you learn. Yeah. If it was offensive, I apologize. I don't think it is though. A name. A yar in English. Let's see. In English adjustment. It just means adjustment. Yeah. Can you be certain that it's not somebody's name in this movie, though? Oh, apparently it's Turkish. Oh, it's a word in Turkish. Okay, so maybe it's not. Yeah, probably not. Turkey is not Latin America. That's correct. Yes. All right. What's the next movie coming out? What's the next movie? Uh, it's a movie called The Humans. Simon. It's confirmed by the most reliable source on the internet, m.theheavennumbers.com, and the Apple TV app. It's a video on demand movie, and this actually looks really great. It's an awesome cast. It's an amazing trailer. I'm excited to watch this one. This is the, this is the one with uh, like Stephen Yoon and uh, Amy Schumer's in this in a more serious role. And I don't really like Amy Schumer in any of her comedic roles, but uh, she, like from the trailer, she looked really good in this. So uh, I'm hoping maybe I'll change my opinion on her. Yeah, another uh, A24 movie. They know they know how to pick them. Yeah, so it's probably going to be good. Yeah, it's weird because it's not coming to theaters, unfor- unfortunately. Oh um, shit! It isn't. No, it's just on a video on demand movie. That seems like a really weird choice. Mm-hmm. Are you sure like, like, it won't be in like a the Princess Twin Theater, like here in or near us in, in Waterloo? It's like it they might be. Even like uh, like it like Uncut Gems was even there. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was like a streaming movie from Netflix. So you'd think that mm-hmm. they would put this movie somewhere. Yeah. So uh, according to Rotten Tomatoes, it says release date streaming November 24th and then release date theaters November 24th, but limited. So maybe we will get it in Princess. So maybe I'll wait. Hopefully they bring it to Princess because I, I don't know. I love the movie going experience. But this well, movie looks what really other good. Way it's would actually you rated. Watch it? You're going to rent it? Like buy, yeah. do the $25 rental? I don't know if that's how much it's going to cost. I'm curious. No, I don't know. They're like typically like minimum $20 from what I've seen anyway. It's 15 bucks. Oh, well, minimum 15 then. That's. Or that yeah. number for me. I, I haven't seen one. Like the, the first one that I kind of saw, hmm. Not maybe not the first one, but one of the first ones I saw was um the King of Staten Island with Pete Davidson. Exactly. Yeah. That was twenty five, I think. Judd Apatow movie. Yeah. I want to watch that movie. It's on Crave. It's on Crave. It looks good. Cool. 
And then the final movie that's coming out this week is uh, Licorice Pizza. And that's coming out again on Friday the 26th. It's coming to theaters. This is being reviewed ex- extremely well. It takes place in like the 70s. And it's I think it's just like a like a teenage love story or young adult love story. Yeah. It's also comedy. It looks really good. A movie I, by I, I, Paul Thomas Anderson. Who loves Venom 2. He, he, I don't want to make fun of him because I, I my respect for Paul Thomas Anderson because he could be such a stuck up pretentious director because he makes such niche kind of films that are very auteur like he he's very he got he's got a very distinct vision every movie he makes and yet he likes Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings and Venom Let There Be Carnage and he admits it freely while Ridley Scott is just dissing them all over the place which and i I doubt he's seen them all Mm. so this is a contrast i feel like this again just very interesting contrast both their movies coming out the same week one of which says they're good movies and that he enjoys them and the other one saying that they're shit they're literally shit (laughs) they're shit they're shit and uh yeah so respect goes up for paul thomas anderson just goes a little bit down for ridley scott because it's just disappointing it's disappointing All language that I, I I don't know. Just show show respect for your fellow directors, guys. Come on, yeah, come on, yeah. Um, and uh, I actually missed the movie, Simon. Oh no. Well, actually, not really, not really. There's an early access uh, screening for Sing Two, but it's not like the official release, so that doesn't count. I think Sing Two release is actually in like December, so. Oh okay. Yeah, there's just an early access movie. Fair enough. Yeah. And that's it. That's all, baby. That's it. That's all. Indeed it is, Adrian. Indeed it is. And that ends our regular scheduled programming for Split Focus of Film and TV podcast episode 73. Do you have anything to add before we close this show off, Adrian? Um, I don't know. I just really want to watch that Resident Evil movie. That's your well priority. So you saw all these like licorice pizza. You saw House of Gucky, as you call it, mm-hmm. and you got Encanto. And you're the one you're most interested in is Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City, which you believed had an atrocious trailer. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. All right. I see where your priorities lie. Well, licorice pizza comes out on uh, it comes out on Friday. Like I'll I'll want to watch that as well. I just I will not uh, be able to watch it on Friday because it's Black Friday, and uh, I will be tired. I imagine, mm. but maybe I will. Who knows? Indeed. Um, but again, I'm I'm off all day Wednesday, so like I might just who knows? Maybe I'll do a triple feature. Are you off on Wednesday? Um, I am. Yeah. Maybe we can do a triple feature. Maybe we can watch all three of those movies. Yeah, we could potentially. Give me cool. a give me a call. Ah, uh, I'll I'll talk to. I would rather just talk to Jim. We just don't talk outside this podcast, man. You sorry, sorry. You'd rather talk to who? Sorry just jimmy Ugh. i don't like him but i just like we just don't talk outside this podcast never have never will so mm. i just gotta reach out to the jimmy character that's true yeah jimmy the um the audio visual technician 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 why did i do a pronunciation weird on that anyway technician at uh spill focus of film tv podcast. i'm speaking like an idiot <laughs> is there something wrong with me yeah jimmy the audio visual technician on Split Focus, a film and TV podcast. I'm extremely tired, Adrian. Anyway. I'm a little bit sleepy. Past midnight. Yeah, yeah. Reach out to Jimmy. We'll go watch that movie. Other than that, audience, please write into us if you can. Split Focus Podcast at gmail.com is where you would write into us with an email. You can also, of course, subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. I would appreciate it if you subscribe. Also, if you could write a review in any of the places that you could write a review. Um, yeah, I kind of want to hear from you. So if you write into us, I'd appreciate it. Adrian might, not really sure. Um, I won't. Oh, okay. Well, there's your answer. Anyways, thank you for listening to the 73rd episode of Split Focus, a film and TV podcast. My name is Simon Eady, and this is Adrian Pinter signing off. Yeah, it is I, Simon. I am signing off. And although you are a dry boy, Batman in the good movie Batman v Superman was never dry. He was actually wet the majority of the movie. It's a great movie. Take care. Goodbye. Maybe that's why he was never too relatable to Ken. Hmm. That's a dumb joke. I'm going to cut that out. Anyway, good night. I'm very confused. Are you saying that Ken's never wet? (laughs) I just... I don't get it. What? What, what does that even hold mean? On, hold on. You're judging my. You're judging my joke. Your dumb joke about Batman never being. What? Is, 
what does that even mean? He's not a dry boy like you because he's wet most of the movie. Is he? Yeah. When? In the rain scene. That one scene? all the scene? scenes where there's rain. When there's, there's multiple rain? multiple scenes with rain. There's multiple scenes. That's just ridiculous. He's also sweaty when he's Batmaning about. Even in the dry times, he's You don't know sweaty, that. You're just sweaty. guessing. Maybe he has eczema. It's possible. I don't know. We don't know, okay? And that was just, I was making an obscure reference to Kenneth Stadelbauer's email. And I bet you, I bet you he enjoyed it. Although it was it, 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 completely idiotic. Anyways, goodbye. Take care, goodbye. This was a ridiculous episode. Yeah, I had fun.